Hi, this is Vicky and welcome to my channel. We are going to do a practice test in this video. Let's start. Which of these is a good example of anticipatory driving? I respond as soon as possible to probable changes in the road traffic situation. Yes, if we respond as early as possible, it reduces the risk of accidents. I attempt to identify the intentions of other road users as soon as possible. Yes, if we understand the intention of other road users, it will definitely reduce the risk of dangerous traffic situations. I limit my observation of road traffic as much as possible on the vehicle traveling directly in front of me. No, we should not limit, rather, we should extend our observation as far as possible to the entire traffic situation in order to react early and to avoid any risk. Having crossed the road, a person in a wheelchair cannot get up the curb and onto the pavement. What do you do? I get out of the car and help the person in the wheelchair? Yes, we need to get out of the car and help the person who needs your help in this situation. I honk the horn and drive around the person. No. Honking and driving past does not help the wheelchair user to get out of the dangerous situation and it is not a good driving behavior. I stop and switch on the hazard warning lights. Yes, we need to ready to brake, stop and switch on the hazard warning lights and if necessary get out of the car and help the beneficiary. Which statements are correct in this situation? Hazard warning lights for the bus are on. Vehicles in both lanes must stop if passengers would otherwise be endangered. Yes, the pedestrians have the priority. In order to ensure a safe crossing of the road, we must stop when necessary. The vehicles in the left lane may pass the bus without paying any special attention. No. The drivers on the left lane also need to pay special attention and drive past carefully. If necessary, they also need to stop. The bus may be passed in either lane but no faster than at walking speed. Yes, it is important to drive at a walking speed because only driving at walking speed can reduce the risk of dangerous situation when people are crossing the road. Let us watch the film. Let us watch one more time. We'll go to the question. What must you look out for when the traffic lights turn green? For the pedestrian? Yes, we have to watch out for the pedestrian and we are not allowed to drive until the pedestrian has completely crossed the street. For the motorbike? Yes, we have a motorbike to the left. He may speed up when the traffic light turns green. So, we have to be prepared and let him drive through. For the oncoming traffic? No. There is no oncoming traffic in this situation. What is the correct course of action in this situation? I break hard while in the bend? No, hard braking in the bend is generally dangerous. If we drive too fast in the bends, we can lose control of our vehicle. In this situation, there is snow and ice on the road and it is more dangerous. I reduce my speed. Yes. The traffic sign indicates snow or icy conditions and snow can already be seen on the road in the curve ahead. So better we reduce our speed in this situation. I avoid jerky steering movements. Yes, snow or ice on the road leads to slippery conditions. Avoid jerky steering movements as there is a high risk of slipping and sliding. How do you take tight bends? 
reduce speed before reaching the bend? Yes, if we drive at high speeds on tight bends, the vehicle is pushed to the edge of the road or pushed into another lane. So we need to reduce the speed before reaching the bend. Only accelerate again when the road straightens out. Yes, we can start accelerate again when the vehicle reaches the end of the curve or when the road straightens out. Reduce speed only when you reach the center of the bend. No, driving at high speed when you reach the center of the curve is the most dangerous movement because the risk of skidding is very high. Therefore, the curve should be approached slowly and carefully. What must you be prepared for when a truck in front of you wishes to turn right into a narrow street? The truck will move well over to the right? No. On a narrow street, if the truck moves well over to the right, he would cut the corner. So it is necessary for the truck to move left to turn right. The truck will reduce speed drastically. Yes, especially when a truck wants to turn into a narrow street, it will drastically reduce its speed because the trucks have larger turning circle than a car and he has to drive very carefully around the bends. The truck will swing out to the left before turning. Yes, since the trucks have a larger turning circle, it is necessary for the driver to move left to take a right turn. Why is consuming drugs even just once dangerous for driving on public roads? Because it can result in my unfitness to drive? Yes. Consuming drugs can result in unfitness to drive and can be very dangerous in road traffic and endanger other road users. Because it can result in an intoxication state lasting for several hours? Yes. Consuming drugs just even once can lead to intoxication and this effect may last for several hours. Because it can cause faulty perceptions. Yes. It can cause faulty perceptions and traffic situations can no longer be estimated correctly. You want to use an autobahn. To allow you to do so, what type specific maximum speed must be entered in part 1 of the registration certificate or in the operating license? See, according to the Strassenverkehrs Ordnung, the road traffic rules in Germany, autobahns may only be used by a motor vehicles whose maximum speed is more than 60 km per hour. When must you signal? When proceeding straight ahead as you leave a priority road which bends sharply? No, there is no need to signal when driving straight ahead even as you leave a priority road which bends sharply. Before pulling out to overtake or to pass? Yes, very important. We need to indicate the other road users that we are going to pull out to overtake. By flashing, we are indicating to the other road users about our intention to overtake or to pass. Before pulling in again after overtaking. Yes, before pulling in again after overtaking, we must indicate since we are going to come back to our original lane. You want to turn left. What driving line should you maintain? In this scenario, it is very important to understand the traffic situation. There are no traffic signs or traffic signals and importantly, we are not driving on an Einbahnstrasse, a one-way street. If you carefully observe, we can see a car in our left side mirror and the rear view mirror. So clearly, we are not driving on a one-way street. Now let us check the options. Both driving lines are possible. No. Driving in the oncoming lane is very dangerous. We must stay on our driving lane only. The right driving line. Yes, as it is not a one-way street, we stay on our lane even when turning left. The left driving line. No, here we have to expect oncoming traffic as well and driving in the oncoming traffic lane is prohibited and very dangerous. You are driving in a tunnel and approaching the end of a traffic jam. What do you do? Make a U-turn and leave the tunnel? No, making a U-turn in a tunnel is prohibited 
and it is very dangerous as well. At the end of the traffic jam, switch off the engine and leave the vehicle. No, switching off the engine and leaving the vehicle should only be done in an emergency situation and not during the traffic jam. Switch on the hazard warning lights. Yes, by switching on the hazard warning lights, the following traffic can be informed about the traffic situation as early as possible. Under what emergency numbers can you call the police and the emergency services in Germany? See, throughout Europe, 112 is the emergency number for the police, fire brigade and rescue services. So, 112. Yes, it is the emergency number throughout Europe. 115. No, this is not any emergency number. 110. Yes. 110 is the emergency number for the police in Germany. So, 112 is the emergency number for the police, fire brigade and rescue services throughout Europe and 110 is the emergency number for the police in Germany. You are approaching a crossroad where the priority situation is not clear to you straight away. What do you do? Always proceed when driving straight ahead? No. If you want to drive straight ahead in a junction where the priority situation is not clear, then it is always advisable to drive through the intersection only when the traffic is clear. Wait, observe and come to an agreement with others if necessary. Yes, since we do not have any overview of the right of way or the priority situation, it is better to wait, observe and if necessary communicate with others. Proceed according to the rule right before left. No. If we are not sure of the right of way situation, we cannot simply proceed according to the rule right before left. It may conflict with the actual rule in force at the intersection. So try to make an eye contact with the other road user and if necessary give them the right of way. What is the right course of action? I may drive through. Yes. We have priority here as we are on the priority road and can therefore drive through in front of the blue car. And very important that we need to indicate or signal left in this situation. I have to allow the blue car to pass through. No, we have priority as we are following the priority road that bends left. So the blue car has to let us go through because we have the right of way. You are driving a motor vehicle with a manual gearbox. What style of driving results in higher fuel consumption within a built-up area? Driving at a higher gear? No, driving at a higher gear actually saves fuel. Accelerating heavily? Yes, heavy acceleration puts in a lot of strain on the engine and increases the fuel consumption. Driving at high engine speed? Yes. Driving at high engine speed also leads to more friction in the engine and increases the fuel consumption. What is the right course of action? I have to allow the cyclist to pass through? Yes, we have to allow the cyclist to pass through as he is driving in front of us and want to drive straight ahead. Therefore, he has priority. I make the turn in front of the cyclist? No. We are not allowed to turn in front of the cyclist. He is driving in front of us. If we try to make the turn in front of the cyclist, we would literally endanger him. So, therefore slow down, brake if necessary and allow the cyclist to pass through. The blue truck may proceed first. No, at this junction the rule right before left applies. So, blue truck has the least priority and may not proceed first. The order of priority is the cyclist, next ourself and then the blue truck. What does this traffic sign require of you? See this is a very important traffic sign and it belongs to the group of danger signs and it means caution children. It indicates that there is a high probability that children will cross the street here. This traffic sign is often found near kindergartens, playgrounds or schools. 
let us check the options greatest alertness yes we should drive with the utmost vigilance as children could suddenly come onto the road from any direction readiness to break yes since it is likely that children could suddenly run onto the road we must be ready to break all the times reduction in speed yes very important we must drive as slowly as possible here and ready to break all the time drive carefully so that nobody is endangered let's watch the film we'll watch the film one more time we'll go to the question what is the right course of action now i switch lane without overtaking immediately no we cannot change the lane because there is a vehicle in the blind spot on the left i remain behind the bus for the moment yes the bus has its hazard warning lights on which means it is stopping to let the passengers get on and off so for time being better we stay behind the bus and also we cannot swerve to the left here because there is a vehicle in the blind spot i overtake the bus at a moderate speed no overtaking is not possible in this situation because to overtake we need to change the lane we cannot change the lane here as there is another vehicle in the blind spot on the left who may enter a street that has this sign all moped riders no the traffic sign tells you that this is a bicycle street moped drivers are not allowed to enter the street all cyclists yes since this is a bicycle street all the cyclists are allowed to enter the street with this traffic sign all persons visiting residents yes there is an additional sign unlegal fry which tells you that residents or visitors of residents are allowed to enter the street what is the correct course of action in this situation i reduce my speed yes the traffic sign indicates the risk of skidding and slipping in order not to skid we should reduce our speed especially when it is raining and the leaves are falling on the road as shown in the picture i avoid abrupt steering movements yes abrupt steering movements can cause the tires to lose the grip and could skid as it is raining and the leaves are on the road it is even dangerous i brake hard no hard braking can cause the tires to lose the grip and we could slide or even skid so I avoid hard braking you are driving on a road outside of a built up area and a car in front of you is driving much slower than is permitted to and has the capacity to what is the right course of action i adjust my speed to that of the car yes even if we don't like it we have to adapt our speed to that of the car in front and not drive too close to it i overtake at a suitable place yes follow the car in front adapt your speed to that of the car identify suitable place to overtake and important do not endanger yourself or others i flash my headlights until the car begins to drive faster no in this case flashing the headlight is not permitted you are driving in fog on the autobahn and have 50 meters visibility what is the maximum speed you may drive 70 km per hour if we drive at 70 km per hour the stopping distance is 70 meters 
with normal braking conditions. So 70 meters is too long with a visibility of 50 meters. So no. If you want to learn more about the distances, I have made a complete video on that and will leave a link in the description box or you may click on the I button on top of this video. Here we need to understand three important things. Stopping distance, reaction distance and braking distance. Stopping distance is the sum of reaction distance and the braking distance. And here if we are driving at 70 km per hour, the reaction distance is 3 times 1 tenth of the speed, which is 3 times 7, it is 21 meters. And braking distance is the square of 1 tenth of speed, which is 7 times 7, 49 meters. So 21 plus 49, 70 meters. So 70 meters is too long with a visibility of 50 meters. Now, let us check the same for 90 km per hour. Reaction distance is 3 times 9, 27 meters. And braking distance is 9 times 9, 81 meters. Together 108 meters. Again, 108 meters is too long for a visibility of 50 meters. So it is not 90 km per hour. Next, 50 km per hour. Reaction distance is 3 times 5, which is 15 meters, and braking distance is 5 times 5, 25 meters. So, total 40 meters, which is within the range of visibility 50 meters. So, this is the correct answer 50 kilometers per hour. What must you remember when towing? Motorcycles may only be towed with a fixed connection. No, motorcycles may not be towed. The distance between the vehicles must not exceed 5 meters. Yes, 5 meters is the maximum distance that can exist between two vehicles. Tow rope or tow bar must be clearly marked. Yes, it is very important to mark the tow bar so that the other road users can easily see it. You are driving a truck with a trailer and wish to give someone a lift as a favor. Where are you allowed to carry such a passenger? On the floor of the truck? No, passengers are not allowed to be accommodated on the floor of the truck. On the floor of the trailer? No, passengers may not be transported on the trailer. In the driver's cab? Yes. Passengers are allowed in the driver's cab, but only in a seat equipped with a seat belt. The traffic light has just changed to yellow. What is the right course of action if you are turning left? I have to turn. No, quite simple. By the time we reach the junction, the traffic light will turn red. So we cannot take a turn now. We have to stop. I have to stop. Yes, we have to stop at the signal and take the left turn only when the signal turns green. Where do you have to place the emission sticker for identifying low emission vehicles? Clearly visible on the inside of the rear window? No, we must place the sticker to the inside of the windshield so that it is clearly visible. Clearly visible on the inside of the windscreen? Yes, we must place the sticker to the inside of the windshield so that it is clearly visible. Clearly visible on the outside of the windscreen? No, we must place it only inside of the windscreen and not outside. What is the correct response if when reversing a combination vehicle the view to the rear is impeded? A person directing is not needed when on a factory premises? No, we need some help from another person to give direction on a factory premises. If the line of sight is broken to the person directing, the vehicle must be stopped. Yes, very important to have a visual contact with the instructing person and it is essential to ensure safe reversing. 
the person directing is only required when driving into a priority road no if possible we should avoid reversing into a priority road with a combination of vehicles if we cannot avoid then continuous eye contact with the instructing person is very important we have a video question let us start the film Let us watch the film one more time. Now go to the question. The electronic stability program ESP display has flashed several times. what is the correct course of action in this situation c when the esp indicator lights up it means that the vehicle stabilization is switched on as soon as the vehicle starts to skid due to low grip let us check the options i go to garage because the esp display is indicating fault no illumination of the esp indicator does not indicate any defect it only indicates that the vehicle stabilization is starting However if the lamp never lights up or it lights up permanently then we should visit a workshop next i reduce my speed because it is too high yes due to the slippery road surface and the speed in the bends which is obviously too high for the road conditions the wheels lose traction and the car could skid so we have to slow down I maintain my speed because the ESP ensures I can continue driving safely. No. The ESP intervenes to prevent the car from skidding. However, we should make sure that we are not driving the curves too fast. What could happen if the cruise control system speed limiter is switched off too late? Tailgating? Yes. The cruise control system ensures that a certain speed is kept constant and not the distance to the vehicle in front. This can lead to tailgating. Excessively high cornering speed? Yes. Since the cruise control system does not adapt the speed in the curves, speed is constant. If we set it high, it may lead to excessively high cornering speed. exceeding the permissible maximum speed yes cruise control maintains a constant speed which is set by the driver it will not automatically adapt to the maximum permissible speed so we need to ensure if the permissible maximum speed changes we must adjust the speed accordingly we are done with the test let me submit do you really want to end the test yes now we can check the result We have passed the exam with zero fault points. Thank you and happy learning.